Jane Warrilow, CEO of the Max Group and author of The Intuitive Energy Matrix. I'm here to talk to you today about starting your own coaching business and I've got eight questions for you to ask yourself first. If you've recently been thinking about starting your own coaching business but are still a little confused about where to start and what to concentrate on, well the following eight questions I hope will help you to gain the clarity you need to move forward. You'll instantly know the answers to some of these questions, but others may demand more thinking and more research time. Don't make the biggest mistake that most coaches make when starting their own business, and they dive straight into action without careful planning. Now, I don't doubt that this method has worked for a few people, but there will be many more who will have suffered a business failure through failing to look before they leap. So do yourself a favour and wake up to the stark realities of setting up and running your own business by asking yourself these following eight questions. If nothing else, it will confirm for you that you know the answers and are well prepared for your coaching adventure. So number one, who am I? Yes, you do need to know this. Starting to run a business is a lot like running a marathon. There's going to be ups and downs, highs and lows, and the prospect can be both exciting and a little bit scary. Now you're going to be flung out of your comfort zone and thus it's really important that you know yourself really well. You need to know your strengths and weaknesses as well as your personal characteristics, you know the boundaries, your needs and your wants. How does your business idea fit with your personal goals over the next few years? You need to ask yourself that because it's really relevant. Your business will demand you to show up with your whole self. You're going to need lots of energy, determination, flexibility, persistence and creativity to build your business into a success. So do you have what it takes? Will you be better equipped if you work solo or in a partnership or with a team of in individuals even? Think carefully about the energy you're going to need to give to your business and how this is going to impact your life. Your business idea, your expertise, even your personality and your energy, they all need to fit well with the type of company you're growing. And if not, somewhere down the road, you might just find your business begins to drain your vitality. And we don't want that. Question number two, what type of coaching business are you going to set up? So we know you that we consider yourself to be a coach, but that isn't enough. You need to define specifically what your products and services are. What problems is it that you're going to solve? What benefits do you provide? Who are you targeting to buy your services? Is it consumers, corporate organizations, or small business owners, or even other coaches? Where are your customers located? How are you gonna reach them? Be specific about your coaching practice and what type of coaching you offer. If you can know at the outset how big you want this business to get, it can be really helpful. You need to research your marketplace, learn everything you can about the type of coaching practice you want to start. Learn from your competitors to make sure that your offer stacks up. Question number three, is my coaching business viable? Is it? In order to find out, you need to do some market research, which basically means you need to talk with your potential clients. You need to be able to answer some simple questions about your business, for example, things like, who will want to buy my product? What problems do they have that I can solve? Are there enough potential clients out there to sustain my business? Now, before talking to potential clients, you're going to need to formulate your offer. So do this by researching your competitors, identify and analyze specifically what are they doing, how are they doing it, and with whom are they doing it? Because you need to make sure that what you're offering is sufficiently different to attract clients. Now once your offer is formulated, ask around, find out what people really think. Ask friends or colleagues for their opinion, but make sure that they're in your target market because that's how you'll make sure that what they're saying to you is relevant. Ask them if they would buy. Now, if yes, great. If not, find out why not. Really listen to what they're saying. And if they don't say, wow, that's a great idea, it may be that you need to think again. Now remember, you can also visit your local library, local chambers of commerce, or even the internet to research current market trends. Question number four, what is my market niche? Your market niche is what makes your business stand out from the pack. It encompasses what makes your business unique. And if your niche is well defined, people will ask about your products and services first and the price later. 
Your niche needs to be clearly focused. It can be narrow in scope, but it needs to be deep. You need to know that you have enough potential clients to bring you the business volume which will make your coaching practice ultimately profitable. Your niche also needs to fit you. If you're passionate about making a difference to certain types of people with certain types of problems, then your marketing becomes really easy. Your business messages have clarity which makes it much easier for clients to buy from you. Question number five, how will I market my business? Now your marketing strategies need to do two things. You must reach your target clients and secondly, you must be continuously in their universe. Out of sight is literally out of mind. And there's so much competition in the coaching marketplace that clients do have the luxury of choice these days. Clients are looking for credibility, for coaches who really understand their problems and can coach them quickly and easily into the changes they want to make. Now these days, most coaches embrace some kind of social networking in their marketing strategy. If you don't know how to use these platforms, then you may need to learn quickly. Also, speaking and writing are a good marketing mix for coaches, which can enable you to reach a wider audience with minimum effort. Now if you're not a marketing guru yourself, then my advice would be to hire a professional. You see, the quality of your marketing will reflect the quality and the quantity of your clients, especially in the early days. Question number six, how will I finance my business? Now this is really important because firstly, do you have enough money to get started? Work with an accountant or business consultant to carefully determine your startup funding. Write your business plan and prepare your profit and loss projection. Now I'd recommend that you have enough personal funds to finance your own living expenses for your first year of business. If you do get a business loan, which of course can be challenging, especially in this economy, you will need to put up collateral, which can often be your house. Now if you choose financing from an angel investor, you will usually have to give up equity in your business, which means you may not have control over what your business really is and how you run it, so be aware. Question number seven, why do I need a business plan? Well, let's assume that you've decided to go into business, you've done your research and you're ready to write your business plan. This is an essential document for you and it can make the difference between success and failure. This is the process where you get the ideas out of your head and onto paper. You set your goals for the year along with the key strategies and plans for how you're going to achieve them. You will need your business plan also if you want to attract potential investors, get a bank loan and more importantly what it does is it eases your stress and keeps you on track. Question number eight. Am I ready for takeoff? Are you? Are you ready to go into your own business now? Only you can answer this question. Are you fit enough to run the marathon? Answering the above questions are going to allow you to make an informed decision. But remember, it's always scary starting your own business as there are always risks involved, but it can be exciting too. If you know at some level that you're ready, don't allow your fears to put you off. Remember, even though there will be obstacles along the way, if you have a well-planned route to follow, you won't stray too far into the woods. Success always happens where preparation meets opportunity. View this as an opportunity. And in my experience, if you've done your preparation and you are prepared to fail fast and learn quickly, you will undoubtedly achieve the success you deserve. If you'd like to know how your personal energy may impact your business, just go to www.iequiz.com and take our free three-minute quiz.